It's also his birthday, by the way. It's Today? It's birthday. He is now 26, and he did ask for the players that are playing against him to not drive impact him because oh, yeah. he's now 26 years old. I mean, uh, one step closer to not being able to do <laughs> I think he's still got it in him, but you know what? I noticed this. I've been paying meticulous attention to Nephew's gameplay in the past week or so, and I've realized Nephew had a new occupation. He's a professional thief. A thief? Yeah, because he steals turns. He's, he has that psychological mindset where he knows when top players want to take their turn and he knows how to steal it from them. I think that's professional thievery. I, I actually agree with you because I've seen him steal so many games by taking his turn back when he's negative, but he's the one mashing Crouch Strong after to get the counter hit nonetheless. And we saw that earlier, I think it was yesterday, um, you know, they blocked a the charge and then he would do Crouch Strong into uh, the Fuha into level three. Yes. He took the game and that's how he made it this far. <laughs> Let's not forget, right, he's actually been pretty precise with his perfect parry attempts. Him and uh, Sian today, they, they just know yeah. when it's like, right, this is a good time to perfect parry. Sometimes it's a do or die situation where it's like, you know what, the moment calls for it. If I get grabbed, so be it, but I'm firm in my decision making, I'm stoic in the decision making, and I will go by it. Now, DCQ has kind of made the Akumas a laughing stock up until the point where he lost to Shuto and then he beat Chris Wong. But now he's going up against the jury. One of his closest compadres was Despair King. Mm -hmm. Not here. I don't know how active he is at the game right now, but I'm pretty sure he's had a little conversation Wait. with some of the Chinese contingents. So, oh. I see a character select screen and I don't see an M Bison, but we're just we're just checking buttons right now. So. Oh yeah, he always does that. He does that. He, he does that. He, okay. He buttons with JP and then he switches. That's so a mind game. Okay. Okay. Now he's, I see the. I see the Lord Bips in here. I mean, look, he's, he's brought this character to the dance. Why disrupt that today? You know? And depending on the scenario now, because JP, the JP Coalition's coming back, but... Slowly, but I, I mean, when, when you settle on a character as M. Bison, do you really need to go back to JP? I mean, it's like, you know, if someone offered you an iPhone 16, when you had an iPhone 15, you're going to take it. Of course. Without paying for it, you, exactly, you're going to do it, right? <laughs> so don't need to take a step back. I mean, JP's an exceptional character, don't get me wrong, but... I'm wondering what the notes were that were um, that nephew was just looking at right now. Drink water. Drink water. Okay, he does have a huge bottle of water with him, yes. I mean, it's only halfway done. I think he also has Boba on the floor, too, so that is definitely a power-up. Okay, okay. Right. The guys are locked in. Oh, he locked into JP. We are going to JP. The mind games. We are seeing the JP. We haven't seen a JP. Actually, no, tell him why we have. That's so interesting because I always felt like JP players said Jeremy was not a good matchup for JP. In season one, yes, but he's kind of come back to his oh. former glory, or at least close to it. Some very cool changes over the past uh, patch of the Terry update. But now you're going to be a little bit more creative. So I want to see what DCQ does with Lubushka, especially if it comes down to it. Mm -hmm. And this might be something that we mentioned psychologically, right? When you're expecting a matchup and you don't get the other one, but as you mentioned earlier, Nephew has been so on point with these perfect parries. Oh, lovely conversion. I haven't seen that one before, and it actually dished out a fair bit of damage there, Sherry. We like those whiff punishes, and this is the spacing that Jury wants to be at. This right there, right under that timer, is where she gets all the whiff punishes she wants, and she's able to keep the plus frames if you lock one of her normals, and then she cancels it into a fireball. Being bombarded, being overwhelmed in the neutral and in the corner here, so DCQ is going to have to think about, yeah, he actually, that throw actually put him out of range. He can start playing the game now. So that was actually fortuitous for DCQ in that regard. And you can see from DCQ, and he's actually not pressing his sequence buttons as much because he's gotten perfect carry twice already. He's kind of just doing one button at a time now, just in case she does try to tap parry. Well, tap parry indeed. Didn't get it against that OD departure here, but trapped in the corner. Tried to get a bait there, but Nephew doesn't tech unless called for. Another perfect parry. Maybe Nephew just slowly walking out of the corner. Trying to catch him with a low four. Swipe. DCQ answers with his own whip punish. And this he might have to splurge it. this for level one. He's going to need the level one to close it out. Worth it. Worth every penny. Crack open the piggy bank. And use as many dimes as need be. No check on the driver, but... Nephew just trying to walk forward and clip him with her own low forward. One of the best in the game. Oh, Crouch Strong, okay? Well, the closer you are, the video, uh, the video game does change because you eliminate drive rush less of a drive rush cancels. It's all about your buttons this time. You've got to worry about the perfect parry, but and you actually make JP a little bit more uncomfortable than normal. Drive rush in for the crouching medium punch into the strike off. He's trying to get into, he's trying to get into tech and he's not biting. Yeah. I have to grab him or do something else. Finally, the drive rush does work out for Nephew, and we're going to dump the level three just to get some more damage on the board, but also gain that drive mirror back, putting Nephew into the green again. That's what he needs. He can still do a drive rush overhead, but I'd wait. There's a throw. 
Was it a projectile? And he still chased him down because that fireball forces you to move. And that should close out game one here with that double drive rush conversion. And DCQ is going to have to have a long, hard shareholder meter in his mind to figure out what character he's going to continue to set with. I was going to say, do you think that was just the first game? So technically, you can just go JP again, but we are going to stage select. We are going back to the character select, and we might go with the M. Bison. Yep, we are. Here's the thing. JP is a character where he used to be death by a thousand hammers, then it turned into death by a thousand cuts. And I've said this before. The more damage you do, the scarier you are, and potentially the more consistent you can be in the game. He needs that firepower. He needs to bring out the cannon. Yeah. Bring out the I cannon. Mean, this is a real cannon. We're talking about two hit touch of death here. <laughs> He needs that. And the thing is as well, I think he kind of shied away from fighting the first game, obviously to test the waters, get your toes in that water there, but also it's defensive issues. I have amnesia, which he actually didn't introduce amnesia at all. Now he has to go back to what he was doing yesterday because between him and Hot Dog, they were backdashing, they were holding up, integrated one drive reversal wake up here and there. But I'm pretty worried for his defensive choices with Bison more so than JP Sherry. Well, I mean, so as you mentioned, M. Bison's defense isn't that good. That's why he has to rely so much on the neutral spacing and like the back dashing, the movement, the up backs. But DCQ already getting the heavy bomb, but now if you're getting the hit, so losing that heavy bomb on her. See, nice back dash. I tell you, there's a perfect parry. I told you the professional thief is here and he's working out really well. Shouts to Nip. But you really have to change your defensive options when you don't have a reversal of some sort. And the wake up super is going to connect. Interesting. He's, he's letting DCQ, I'm not scared to do a, a, a defensive choice when you plant the bomb on me, but that gives DCQ more than enough information. The overhead comes out. He closes out this round here. This is being worse for wear. It's not completely torrid just yet for DCQ. Oh, and yes, you can do that over the Fuha. Me pressing the counter hit conversion. Yep. Man, Nephew, not afraid to just let it rip even if it's burning him out because he's got the one, as more rounds you get, the more mistakes and more risk you can take in a game like this. That's why rounds, no matter how minuscule it can be, you need that margin. Look at the spacing, trying to walk up throw, but DCQ checking with the crouch jab. Fourth throw. Is he gonna threaten the stun? Yeah, he's threatening the stun. He's trying to get into tech. Dude, Nephew is too disciplined. You gotta do something else. Yeah, Nephew has not got shimmied once yet. You really have to start throwing him. Just keep on throwing him if that's the case. But when you start throwing him, you might wake up with a jump medium punch. <laughs> Find out. That's true. That is Nephew special. Look at this DCQ burnt out already. Right overhead. Oh, rush overhead. We're going to dump it into... He's going to get the level 3 in time, Sherry. And that's going to be a 2-0 here for Dark Nep. He showed up. And he did say, if I lose with the onesie, I'm changing the costume. He's 2-0 up. Yeah. Hasn't lost yet, but man, I th I'm wondering because we didn't see any overheads against his JP, right? But we've seen two overheads come out so far against Bison, and I'm wondering if it's just because Bison is a charge character, you're so used to holding down back. No, I, I oh. think the thing is for me, it's, it's easier said than done. When a drive rush cancel happens, stand up. They're not gonna do. <laughs> they're not gonna do a significantly delayed low like guy. Or is you have to stand up, but it's very hard because you expect people to finish their combos there. Mm. But it's hard because in the mid range. Nephew's movement has been really good. Using the fireball, walk speed, dash, drive rush. It's hard to maintain and keep that in the cycle of options you have to be paying attention to. So yeah, all right, the CEO decision has to be made right now. Yep, this is it. This is the last game for DCQ, so I, I do think he should stick with the M. Bison. I think he just needs to switch the way that he approaches the neutral. I, I agree with that. I'm going to tack on something as well. He needs to get it out of his head that Nephew's going to tech. He thinks Nephew's going to tech. Oh, no. No, I see. We're going with JP. We're going back to the first character. So he tried the death by a thousand cuts. Maybe we're going to see the amnesia this time. Listen, DCQ recent time against top players, his amnesia hasn't been particularly good. Oh, okay. He's asleep at the wheel. Oh, no. Uh -oh. Not yet. Okay. Oh, Another fourth throw. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Three, four. We finally got the back dash on the fourth one. Okay. Because he had no choice, that's why. <laughs> Let's see if he can get a combo. He might have to play from here for a little while, but he's got careful of a drive rush. Oh, and he gets shimmied. How many times are you going to take the throw and then eventually you get shimmied in the last interaction? Dude, Nephew's exposing his game plan, his future plans, everything. Yeah, Nephew's got a huge read on him right now. I don't know how DCQ's going to switch it up. Oh, we have to see Amnesia at some point, I think. That might Not be... from this, because if he does the fuzzy, he's done. Let's find out. Empty jump low of the fuzzy. 
He goes low, good block there from DCQ. He's got to make a choice. There's the defense. Okay. We're going to wake up Harry, build some meter back. Yeah, he's still not oh, doing it. Do no. not, please do not do it. Please do not do it. Because he's got no choice at this point. No cancel there from Nephew. There's the Amnesia. He's got something. He needs a lifeline here, Sherry. I mean, he's building up the three bars. We do have a level two on deck. He's close to burning out. Nephew, oh, try. Didn't bite, but he did get burnt out. Blocking Pierce. Oh, out of five. We can actually chip him out. <laughs> that is a chip. And there you have it. An absolute domination there from Nephew. Dark Neff showed up in the building there. He's not ramping. He gets in this point. He's hungry. He's ravenous yeah. for that qualification spot. And if he's got to make that amazing loser's run, then so be it. Man, that that pressure was relentless. He was not giving DCQ any room to breathe, whether it was his JV or even his Bison. You know what? That might be the tail of the tape there. That might be the main thing, regardless of what character he picked against. But I think Jury is some of the best at harassing people in this game. Oh, easily. And again, that's the spacing that I was talking about. When you have them in the corner and you're right under the timer, that is where Jury excels. And like DCQ really just couldn't get the space against him. He couldn't really shift out a gear one with either character, which is very unfortunate, actually, yeah. because he's had an amazing weekend. But sometimes everybody hits a roadblock or, you know, uh, you see cow chops on the road. But it's one of those things where, where do you stop? Mm -hmm. When you're one nil down, you can make the slight adjustment. The character swap was fine. You're two oh down and both your characters have not given you any sort of second wind. How do you come back from that? How do you recuperate from that? And that's what was difficult. And you mentioned as well, the overheads, they're coming out in full force. Yep. I don't think you blocked one. Nope, all three hit. And yeah, just really this, Nephew was just able to find the space every single time and then just had his back against the corner. And when you're playing two characters with no reversals, you really have to take all this pressure unless you're willing to threaten with a super or of some sort or amnesia maybe earlier in the game instead of taking four throws, three, four throws in a row. But he knows the ramifications of a poor amnesia. The amnesia was successful. I mean, we, we literally jinxed each other. I mean, it was the very last interaction, right? So even if the, because the amnesia was successful, but the health deficit was so crazy, the difference, it didn't really matter that the amnesia hit.